During the period of the judges around the 11th century BCE, the tabernacle was at Shiloh in the hill country of Ephraim. Eli was high priest and Samuel the prophet had been delegated to his care by Samuel's parents, Hannah and Elkanah. Jerusalem was not yet the Israelite capital, and so the people went up every year to worship and offer sacrifices at Shiloh. The Philistines, a sea people from the area of Kaftor or Crete, settled the area plaguing the Israelites in war. Their five cities, or the Pentapolis, dominated the main coastal highway and the lowland access of the Shephelah and Eretz Israel. These cities were Ashkelon, Ashdod, Ekron, Gath, and Gaza. Today, the ruins of these cities are grass-covered hills and hard to access. In battle array, Israel went out to fight the Philistines at Aphek. This area controlled the only land bridge past the Yarkon River on the coastal plain. The location of the Israelite camp was nearby at Ebenezer, in Hebrew, Evan Ha'ezer. It may well have been what is now Isbet Sarta. The tell was inhabited on one archaeological layer, which was settled only during that time period. Ebenezer, translated as Stone of Help, was probably a stone enclosure Gilgal of the Sharon area, an important temporary cultic military encampment. Another candidate for Ebenezer is Jaljulia, which is largely not excavated and is a Palestinian town today. Jaljulia reflects the name of Gilgal, a toponymic preserved until now. The Battle of Aphek ended in defeat. Eli's sons, Hophni and Phinehas, had brought the Ark of the Covenant into the camp as a talisman. Israel lost heavy casualties to the Philistines, and Hophni and Phinehas also died, with the Philistines capturing the Ark. A runner brought the report from the battle line back to Eli and Shiloh, probably on this route of modern Highway 5. When Eli heard this news, he fell backward on his seat at the city gate and died. The Philistines brought the ark from Ebenezer to Ashdod, setting it up in front of Dagon, their god. On two occasions, they found Dagon face downward on the ground before the ark. In addition, the men of the city were stricken with ophalim, or a skin condition, which affected their hidden parts. God's judgment was against these uncircumcised Philistines and their male virility cult. The Philistines represented their virility by phallic situlae, made either in ceramic or metal. Panic broke out, and the men of Ashdod held a council, sending the Ark of God to Gath, later the hometown of Goliath. At this juncture, they sent the Ark to Ekron, and God's hand also struck the men there heavily with the same Ophalim. This time there was death and the text mentions a mice contagion ravaging the land. The Ekronites couldn't rid themselves of the ark fast enough, setting it in a field outside the city for seven months. After consulting diviners, the Ekronites decided to send the ark to Beit Shemesh, the Israelite city closest to them. They yoked two milking cows to a cart and placed the guilt sacrifice in a box with the ark. The box contained figures of five gold ophalim and five gold mice, representing each of the five Philistine cities. They sent these milking cows down this part of the Sorek Valley with their calves shut away. The cows made a beeline to Beit Shemesh while the Philistines followed at a distance. While reaping their wheat crop in this valley, the men of Beit Shemesh saw the ark at the great stone of the field of Joshua. With rejoicing, they split the wood of the cart and offered the cows as a burnt offering to God. Their joy turned quickly to mourning, however, when God struck some of the men of Beit Shemesh for looking into the ark. Who then was able to stand before this holy God? 
So the Israelites sent the ark up to the hill country of Kiryat Yearim to the house of Abinadab on this hill. Abinadab's son took charge of the ark, where it rested for twenty years until King David would later bring it to Jerusalem. Samuel the prophet urged the Israelites to put away their foreign gods, and the people repented. Israel gathered here at Mitzpah when Samuel prayed for them and offered a lamb as a burnt offering to the Lord. The Philistines heard about the gathering at Mitzpah, drawing near to attack, but God thundered and confused them, and the Israelites defeated them, heading northward. This action subdued the Philistines all the days of Samuel, who acted as the circuit judge in these Benjamite territories. And the Ark of the Covenant? The God of Israel did not need anyone to care for the Ark, and it could never be a talisman for his divine presence, either by the Philistines or by his own people.